Hi, this is Emily. And this is Helen. Presenting you Hello Audio, where every two weeks we are showing you the best entrepreneurs for music, audio and tech. And a huge thanks to Leo and Tamara who are producing this podcast for us. Hello Audio by The Venue Berlin. Welcome to our next episode. Today we got Groovecat in our studio. Hello. Hello, hello Helen. Hello. We got uh, Jakob and Markus. Um, and I think we could jump straight in again and um, you could explain us a bit more about Groovecat. Yeah, thank you for the invitation today. We are very happy to be here. Thank you um, for being here. <laughs> yeah, what's Groovecat? Groovecat is a platform for music moments. So for this feeling when the song you're currently listening to fits perfectly to the situation you're in right now. Like you probably know these situations when you come from work, the sun shines, you listen to a track and kind of syncs up with everything. It fits perfectly and creates this very nice feeling inside of you. And we create a groove cat to capture those music moments. So when you have a music moment like that, you can record a video in the app the app automatically detects the song that's playing on your streaming service and automatically underscores the song that's playing, the original song with the original video you're taking in the app to an audiovisual package that we call Music Moments. So you have to have um, a streaming service that yeah, you use? Yeah, like our users, they connect with their Spotify account. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also use it without having a Spotify account and you can listen to the previews. So people record and capture the music moments. They can save them for themselves as a musical photo album. And of course, also watch music moments of other users and see the video and listen to the music. And if they like a song, they can save the song directly in the streaming service, in the Spotify playlist without leaving GrooveCat. All right. How did you come up with this idea? And why do you think it's so special? Um, and who I are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Marcus. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of GrooveCat. Um, and we actually, funnily enough, we all, like all three co-founders of GrooveCat had the idea about like doing an app for music moments. Um, but not simultaneously, not at the same time, but all like everybody for it themselves. Uh, for me, it was um, back in the days, like 2014 or something. Uh, I was driving on the German Autobahn, the very first German Autobahn around Duisburg, which is like a pretty dark, industrial, gloomy city. Uh, it was during the night and I was like completely alone. I've never experienced that ever, that you're alone on the Autobahn. And uh, James Blake was playing um, Limit to Your Love. And it's the first time that I heard that song. And it just like, you know, it was the perfect counterpart to what I ex was experiencing. Like, you know, this dark, gloomy tunnel on the Autobahn. And then James Blake's like uh, vibrant voice. It's yeah. amazing. Nice. Yeah, I love this song. It's really yeah. nice. Um, cool. So what do you think, what gap are you filling with GrooveCat? Because right now, as I imagine it, it sounds a bit similar to maybe Instagram stories. <laughs> Instagram stories, yeah. Uh, we actually get that a lot. And um, like really talking about that with people, they kind of more and more realize that um, what, are the, what the differences between GrooveCat and Instagram essentially are. Because uh, what we stand for is um, high quality content, um, stuff that's really like meaning something to you. It's uh, meaningful memories, meaningful moments that you want to go um, go back through and want to go back in time with um, when you go through the app and like look over your your past music moments. It's the really something that you cherish for yourself and which is important for you, rather than doing three Instagram stories an hour about your dog or something. I don't know. Like, you know, something but really meaningful. But dogs are meaningful. nice too. <laughs> dogs, are, dogs are really nice. I like dogs too. Yeah. Nothing against dogs. Yeah, and kind of when, when we have met, we, we realized that we all know these moments mm -hmm. or have these moments like continuously in our lives. And then we kind of searched the internet for social proof and discovered that so many other people have those moments as well. It was two years ago when this Instagram stories thing, it didn't exist. So we like, um, yeah, we, we saw, man, there's a huge demand 
for those music moments and this is like a very emotional topic and we kind of found the yeah approach to to deal with these music music moments it's like it's it's super global it's universal like um yeah. uh, in our time like building up groovecat we obviously like search the entire web for other people that have similar moments and it ranges from japan south korea to latin america like north america i don't know even africa people are um having music moments and sharing them in any in any way but they don't have like a native platform for it where, where um people come together and share exchange their experiences that they're uh, having with music so we are creating this essentially for people to to come together and have a shared experience to that so you're basically setting up a new social media platform i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's primarily social media like uh, seriously it's not it's not because like the um the word social media seems kind of old or something it is more really people go to groovecat to primarily catch their own music moments like to really having uh, um, a, a tool to relive those moments and really jump back into the moment that has meant something to them um, and that's the big difference like the social the social aspect is just building on the experience of capturing these moments for yourself so it's it's primarily mm. I just but you still have followers other. and the followers can like or react to your music yeah. moments so there's yeah, still a social side to it right yeah of course okay. yeah Yep. I'm just wondering well. because right now you see all these social platforms and they're losing users right now. And I'm really curious what you think, why why you will rather have more and more users and why you different you, you always kind of you already kind of mentioned this right now, but um maybe you could elaborate a bit more on this why why you differentiate yourself and uh why and how you will succeed and gain more users. The thing is that GroupCat, how we see it, is uh, kind of counterpart to s social media, how we see it today. Um, because GroupCat is, on the emotional side, it's high quality content. It's very, very personal content and um, a very, like, uh, how do you say it? Deep. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, decisive, you know? Mm -hmm. And... Um, This is what, like, if you, if you compare it to Facebook or, or let's say, Instagram stories, it's kind of like, it's it's fast con content. It's fast, like, you create it fast and you consume it fast, and then it's it's gone fast, you know? It's like, in terms of the quality, from the emotional quality of the content, it's pretty low-quality low, qu low quality content. Um, and, you know, if I may ask the question, when was the last time you, you read a BuzzFeed list of, like, the 20 best things to, I don't know, train your dog? Or, like... I don't know, like a heftig dot co, like you know, first I was surprised, but at minute three I cried, like this kind of clickbait things, you know. When was the last time you watched something like this? It's like I don't know. Yeah. I honestly don't know. I, it's, like, it's quite a yeah. while ago, definitely. I don't. Mm. I don't think I'm the person though that clicks on those things too often. But I mean, like y uh, yourself, mm. you said it yourself. You you kind of you're kind of educated now. You're educated in a in in the social space uh, from the internet of like um, cherishing more high quality content and like really appreciating uh, learning more about things and this is like how GrooveCat works as well because a person not only shares their uh, their their music that they like they're also sharing the emotion that they felt while while listening to the song and that's something that goes beyond the content on social media that we face right now. Um, and this is really something that we believe will uh, will get more traction in uh, in the internet space. How we um, yeah, experience it right now. So, do you think all the traditional social media will go down? No, <laughs> but I think it's it, what we might experience at the moment is that social media might have a kind of a life cycle. Like when you ask people today, hey, why do you go? Why do you go still go on Facebook? How do you use it? People tell me, okay, I use the messenger and I use it for events. Like I hardly stroll through my news feed and consume any status updates or videos because it's it's not so inspiring anymore. So 
what's happening is that we have new social media platforms that are competing for the time of the users. That's a famous MySpace um, example, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, interesting. Um, are there any other competitors that you see right now, apart from Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, maybe? There are like, um, you know, the, the, the term of the competitor mm. is, a, is a pretty hard term to, to come by because um, it could either mean like, are you, are you competing in social media time with others? Then definitely Instagram, Facebook are uh, a competitor. Also Snapchat, Musical.ly, I don't know, or like TikTok, whatever you want to name it. Mm. Um, they're definitely competing about like social media time. And it's like around half an hour that everybody has a day or that at least our target group has a day to use social media. And we're competing about time with them. But if it really comes to like music moments we don't see anybody doing something similar in the market right now which is al already encouraging us to like um, push forward and keep group get going to like uh, yeah re really reach the audience that will that will love uh, our product i'm just thinking maybe also music discovery is a big topic as well because yeah. you can go on your platform uh, yeah people tell us there's some people that don't create that many music moments themselves, more like the mm -hmm. passive content, like passive users, but they tell us, we do a lot of user interviews. They tell us, hey, I like, I really enjoy to open GrooveCat, discover new music and save it in my Spotify playlist and listen to it later. So it's a kind of a human um, curated uh, music discovery as an opposite to algorithm based playlists. And we'll, I think that will definitely be our play uh, at a later stage when there's so much con uh, content on GrooveCat that you can uh, actually like, do also like playlisting with it. Like, okay, GrooveCat, give me the best songs for... Like, I'm going to drive my car from here to Dresden and give me the perfect songs for driving from Berlin to Dresden. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you know what people will have listened to while they did that, right? Exactly, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, you've been, on, like, you've been working on this now for, I think, four years. Yeah, two more more? than two years yeah two years yeah. Two a little years? bit over over two oh. years yeah. oh uh, sorry i thought it was even longer <laughs> um <laughs> the, so the, yeah the, i mean the, the idea has been growing growing in our heads yeah. since uh since that, but like actively really choosing to work on groove cut is mm -hmm. like two a little bit over two years mm. um how do you think you will make money later out of this because lots of those platforms suddenly start with advertisement um do you have um a different goal or do you did you make your mind up about this yet uh yeah we definitely have like um not because we uh want to think about the money <laughs> obviously uh groove get is our baby and we want to think about that um but being kind of forced into um yeah doing precautions for the uh, preparations for the future also like how do you make money obviously um it's 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 kind of like on the data side so um, the first thing is, is on the data side and on the other thing is on the collaborative side. Um, but let me start with the data side. Like uh, what we can do on GrooveCat is uh, we have precise data, data on um, which song made a specific target group feel in a certain way in a specific moment. Um, and you can reproduce that feeling, right? Um, so what we can do with it is um, we could offer the data to, let's say, people that make playlists, so labels. Um, they can go to Spotify and say, like, okay, uh, GrooveCat tells me that this and this content that I provide or that I have the master's rights for is primarily listened to while people are cooking. So why not making a cooking playlist, like a context playlist with it, or like an emotion playlist? Uh, these are the best happy songs of 2016 or something, you know, kind of like it's flashback moments. Um, but what is also interesting is um, music in any sort of out of visual content. Because let's say you are making a commercial spot, uh, you need the perfect music f to, to really counter or like to, to go with your commercial spot. You need the perfect music to get the audience into the emotion that you want to have. Um, and GrooveCat can provide data for this business case you know you can say okay there's the new xyz car that drives around the corner while it's raining and it should make 20 to 25 year old german guys happy you know 
um, GroupCat can provide this kind of data? So we basically build emotional profiles of songs and what we give out is song recommendations. Um, this is like important to say, it's like not, it's not data about a single user. It's no user data, it's song recommendations. And who do you want to sell it to? To advertisers, music supervisors, brands? Who's your target audience? I mean, like on the uh, like, it could be any. It could be anybody who works uh, with music in a commercial context. Um, we actually like you. You can give recommendations to um, music supervisors that choose the music for games, for commercials, for films, movies. Mm -hmm. um, you could also like you know if you're if you're a brand say H&M or whatever and you want to have the perfect in-store music um, for any sort of collection that you're that you're selling then uh, GrooveCat can provide data for that mm. or you're a filmmaker you're a cutter I don't know like an editor yeah and also for research projects like mm. there are a lot of research projects going on at the moment that kind they want to find out hey how does music evoke emotions mm -hmm. and how does music correlate with situations and your environment so research projects are also a very interesting and valuable business partner for us yeah that sounds good what would be your next steps so you just brought out the app so we 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 launched three weeks ago mm -hmm. um with ios and an android beta um so the next steps are to really get the beta going and to implement our next features to trigger more referral. For example, that our users can invite the Facebook friends, that they can send music moments to friends via WhatsApp, that they can interact more with each other within the app. So this is, these are our next steps to really make the app slick and nice and shiny and that is a great product that people really, really like. More social. <laughs> more so social you're getting a bit more so towards social media <laughs> yeah it's also it's also like implementing creative mm. features for people that really uh capture their music moments better yeah. you know yeah so that's it cool yeah i guess it would be interesting for people to share their music moment with people maybe who are not on the app so yeah I think exactly that could be quite and at the moment we have a very um very organic growing user base and they come back to our app and we want to start from there. So we want to like treat our user base very well, ask, hey guys, what, what are the new features that you want to have on the app and develop our app together with our existing user base. Cool, I'm excited to see how that goes. <laughs> as you might know, I'm a user as well and I tried it out. Um, yes. You can follow me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you even have an artist account, right? You have an artist account, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's oh, a secret, yeah. sorry. Um, it's called Pretty Picky. Follow it. <laughs> it's very good. So you're, you're capturing music moments. Why do you think is music and memory so strongly connected with each other? We are no neuroscientists, but this is, it's actually proven that like the area in the brain uh, that is responsible for music listening is very close to the area of emotions and autobiographics and... Um, so I could like quote a neuroscientific explanation, but I think it stands for itself that you connect certain faces in your life, certain relationships, like with certain songs. And I think everyone who listens here when like li listen to like a certain song and it directly takes you back to a certain situation in your life. And um, I think we don't need an explanation for that. It kind of stands for itself, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, do you have a special song that reminds you of something very oh, particular? So many, yeah. so many. Like songs that remind me of relationships, of happy times, of sad times, of travels, of like growing up, coming of age, like school time. It's yeah, definitely. It's it's so many songs. Yeah, and it, and it's really nice. Like in GrooveCat, like we use it for maybe um, almost a year now mm -hmm. and when i go back in my into my music moments and like in my musical photo album and i consume music moments that i have recorded half a year ago it really takes me back to a moment and it's it's really nice to to watch these moments to feel back to reflect and it's, it's a great tool yeah it's pretty amazing <laughs> like, 
you see, no. we 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 Your like our own product so pretty amazing. much. No, I mean, like I'm serious. It was like I was I was in Australia. It was the first time I was like didn't plan to go there, but somewhere and end up there for a month. And like I had my travel players with me, and I I shot a lot of music moments. And it's pretty amazing to go back and really have your travel players connected to the moments or to the situations where you were in um, and really have that at hand, like at any at any time. And also, like, yeah. I wanted to add uh, uh, this, to J what Jacob said was um, sometimes also when you, when you listen to music um, that has been like accompanying you through like, I don't know, a certain time, either happy or tough time, a rough patch, whatever, um, it also helps you like if it brings you back to the situation helps you to reflect on the situation where you were in like through a total different angle um and if music is something that achieves that that you really reflect what you have been going through uh, and the, to actually assess the feeling that you have been in like half a year ago a year ago and it's pretty amazing that it that it can do that and we want to really help people to also have the same experience and to enhance their experiences mm. so that's pretty cool to see yeah you've mm. used um so you've been testing GrooveCut for quite a while now mm. um <laughs> so can long. you already see with the users you got so far are there any specific moments that are quite often when people would have a music moment i would say yeah. like yeah. probably like 90 percent of the music moments uh, happen to be on the road when people are traveling when people are moving around the city um when people on, on travels abroad, in, in the plane, in, in the train, in the car, um, when there's like the environment kind of influences your listening experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's also yeah. like, yeah, when, when people are not distracted anymore. Yeah. It's like when you're at home, what, you do, what are you doing? You're on Netflix. When you're at work, what are you doing? Yeah, obviously you're working or anything. Netflix. But <laughs> yeah, also Netflix, <laughs> Facebook. Uh, but um, yeah, that's also like, I think when people are traveling or when they're on on the go, they are really like listening. Yeah, because listening. Because they can't do anything else. Looking out of the window. Yeah, and, yeah. and those are the moments when yeah. when group get really comes in handy. And this is this is like the strongest part about music that you can consume it everywhere. Even if you, if you're like looking on the road, if you have to drive a car, if you're on the bicycle, you can like still consume music. Oh yeah. I, I remember I had a really nice music moment and I couldn't record it. I was driving through uh, the UK close to Liverpool, I think, in the train. And I was listening to Pete Doherty and mm -hmm. I saw a typical oh. English suburb and yeah. I thought that was a really nice moment. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it's interesting to mm -hmm. add to the product. I think we haven't said it earlier that you like on GrooveCat, you cannot connect old videos with like songs from a library. You can only capture the video you're taking in the moment and combine it with a, th mm -hmm. with a song that's playing in that moment. So that means it's very authentic content. And so when you watch music moments, you know, okay, that person really listened to that song in that situation. And right now, at least you can't use filters, right? No. And a lot of users kind of tell us it's nice to have no filters because they don't have to think about, okay, which filter I use and blah, blah. So it's the content creation process is very, it's two clicks. It's really record the video and that's it and send it. And we designed it because we don't want to, um, that it like kind of uh, disturbs the music moment experience. If you experience these moments, we don't want to spoil them. It's just yeah. like, you know, just grab your phone, like record a video, 30 seconds, post it on the app and then put the phone back in your pocket and like enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, that's basically what we want to achieve to have the m most possible simple content creation process. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything else um, that you want to mention? Anything that we didn't say so far that I didn't ask you? Well, basically just like a call out to all the people that are listening, you know, that, um, yeah, if, you, if you're excited about music, if you're excited about music moments, if you really want to uh, get on board with what we're doing, or if you're just interested in what these two guys, voices, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> voices from <laughs> Berlin are like doing right now, um, please like feel free, download the app, GrooveCat, it's available on the App Store and the Play Store, um, use it, give us your feedback, yeah. um, really dive into the world of music moments and let it really enchant you how it enchanted us and this is not just like my commercial voice speaking out of me it's <laughs> actually it's actually true it did enchant us uh, what people are 
putting on GrooveCat. It's really amazing. Yeah. Hit us up. <laughs> Anything's welcome. Yeah. Cool. We um, got one last question that we ask everyone who's doing the interview with us. Mm -hmm. What is uh, your favorite tune right now? I have to I have to admit it's probably like very um, like 50% of the people at the moment they get asked this question probably get the same answer it's uh, for two weeks I've been listening to Drake to the Scorpion Ooh. album all the time yeah. like I'm not a hip hop person I've never listened to Drake I come <laughs> like from electronic bit edgy yeah. music but I don't know how but this Drake album totally got me mm -hmm. I listen to it like 24 7 when I shower when I go to work when I work before I go to bed it's it's <laughs> it's the Drake album and I really I, I try to do this dance you know <laughs> um, yeah it's 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 weird I don't know um, I'm really going with the hype at the moment um Yeah, like I, I hope that you were going for like a more niche track because <laughs> Jacob is usually doing the, the the song that only the producer knows and the mom of the producer and then <laughs> that's it. Like the ones that have 40 plays on YouTube. Um, because I, I, I hope that I could go with a commercial thing because I'm really like getting into Whitney Houston. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> I, th I think I, I saw somebody singing, or I heard somebody singing uh, The Greatest Love of All. And ever since, like, I'm, I'm not kidding, since um, Friday, I'm waking up every morning having this, like, super cheesy synth in my head. It's did, like, dun, 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 did dun, you dun, secretly dun, dun, uh, use our jukebox? I think, is it on there? I'm not sure. I, I don't think Whitney Houston is on there. I don't know. It should be. It should be now. I, I will not rest until I found the seven inch of the greatest love of all from Whitney Houston and put it in the jukebox at the venue building. I will not rest. This is a second. big shout out to everyone listening to us. Yeah, like, and then please everybody come by to the group, uh, the group get the, group, <laughs> the venue Berlin and listen to the greatest love of all of you. <laughs> yeah, and um, thank you guys from our side for inviting us to your beautiful studio and doing the podcast with us. Big thank you again to Mellow Drive who produced our jingle. Hello, audio by the venue Berlin.